So coming from your journey, right? As you mentioned that there was, you know, we were made fun of it a lot and stuff. I was like, where did you start? Because we we know that Michael Sartain now, mm -hmm. but we were winding the clock back, you know, say like 30 years or so. Like where exactly was your starting point to where are you now? Um, if you can outline a little bit of that journey. Are we talking about the a business? Are we talking about my understanding of Di some intersexual dynamics like which part of it are you talking about I'm talking about both all, all okay. of it so I, 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 a couple of major inflection points one for me was out of college uh, mci worldcom and enron go out of business and mm -hmm. i had an it degree from the university of texas at austin so i can't find a job because mm -hmm. enron turned out to be a huge sham so everyone right. from enron gets fired and so there's just this this glut of there's just too many people in this industry so i can't find a job so i end up almost as a joke taking a job as a dj at a strip club and then I later on, you know, I have a degree, I have a business degree and I'm a DJ at a strip club. So who do they want to promote to me? Manager? Me. So I end up becoming a manager at a strip club uh, when I'm 23, 24, 25. Now, I will tell you this. Um, I ended up hooking up with a lot of girls working at a strip club. But usually they weren't even girls at my strip club. There were, I would go to other strip clubs and I just, because I understood strippers so much better, right. I was just really good with strippers at this point. That was the first thing. And the second thing that happened was I would see girls come in getting beaten by their spouses and then making excuses for their spouses and listening to the other girls like say this stuff and then leaving and then coming back and getting beaten again. And like, it was very sad to watch, but I also knew, Hey, wait a second. Something in the system is broken. Disney lied to me. My church lied to me. My family, they meant well, but they right. lied to me. Right. If I treat hot women well, they will not treat me well back by default, which is what I was told it's not true. Also, the other part is like when a girl cheats on you, you're like, baby, she cheated on you because she couldn't handle you. You're my special snowflake. And she, no, she cheated on you because you fell short somewhere. You need to wake the fuck up and recognize that. Yep. But the world isn't going to tell you that, yeah. right? It's the worst advice you can take as a man. Like when your girl cheats on you, take that, use it, learn from it and go get a PR on the bench. No man who gets cheated on should go a month without a new personal record on a bench press. No man should do that ever. And so like, it was just one of these situations where I was like, something's broken and I'm watching these beautiful women. I'll never forget it. This one girl is like hottest girl at the strip club I worked at. I was still a DJ. She come in, flirt with me all day, just sit on my lap. I'm 22. I'm like, like slobbering on myself. This girl's so fucking hot. I think I have no chance with her. All she does is complain about the other daytime DJ. This guy treats her like trash. He's like, I can't fucking stand this guy. I can't never forget. His name's Ryan and her name's Joy. And so Joy's like sitting on my lap you know, whatever, flirting with me half the time. It's like, man, I fucking can't stand the guy. I only come here to work with you because I love you. And then blah, blah, blah. A couple of weeks go by. She goes, just want to let you know, you know, I moved out with my, like I broke up with my husband. I was like, oh man, I got a shot. And I go, and I moved in with Ryan. What? You just told me what a piece of shit he was. And yeah. you moved in with him? Something was broken. Something that the world had. Now, thank God I learned this at 23, 24. Something that the world was telling me wasn't true. When I picked up the the rational mail the first time, I was like, like it wasn't like a a, a, a like a eureka moment. I was like, thank you for some, thank you finally for someone writing this down correctly because this is what I had seen so many times. I knew this to be true. Uh, rule number one in my program is, um, we don't listen to the words; we only pay attention to people's actions. Yep. The original form of that fifteen years ago was anything a woman states emphatically, the opposite is true. That was the okay. that was originally what it was. And then I changed it to what we, what we say now. Um, so the so that what, what happened was my red pillness awareness came if, ironically, this is oh two, oh three, the same time that Rolo starts posting on, you know, so suave forum or whatever. Oh, so we're yeah. kind of starting around the same time. Then the second eye opening moment for me was oh six. My father's killed by a drunk driver. I'm a first lieutenant in the U.S. military. And uh, six weeks later, I get deployed to the Middle East. So I'm in the Middle East. And I'm not dealing with it well enough. Like, I'm not dealing with it at all. Like, I'm actually surprised at how well I'm dealing with the fact that my father was just killed by a drunk driver. I'm 29 years old. And um, when I'm there, there's a, my girlfriend at the time. I go took on, on remember, it's MySpace back then. Oh, yeah. I'm looking on MySpace. And on MySpace, I see her. She has not broken up with me, but she's already with some other dude at Cabo San Lucas at the Ark of Cabo. And I'm getting cheated on. Not cheated on. Like, she just, like. She was just done with me, you know, and I finally got an email like afterwards telling me, hey, I need to move on. And I don't blame her. Right. Think about it. She just started dating me and my dad dies and then I get deployed to the Middle East. That's too much for a woman to handle. Wow. So she, we, we break up. We're still friends to, to this day. It's really funny. Uh, and and so now I come back and then like I'm having like a really hard time just like dealing with life because yeah. I'm also kind of stuck. Like I love being in the military, but I'm stuck. I'm stuck yeah. in Warner Robins, Georgia. 
And someone recommends that I read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And man, after the mm -hmm. first three chapters, I pull my car over to the side of the road and just like this way, I'm driving back and forth from Atlanta to Warner Robins. I pull over, I remember I'm going southbound in 85, pull over to the side of the road, and I just feel like this weight like lifted from my chest. Man, these fucking worthless people don't matter. Like I, it, I like it was the first time when I came to this realization that only matters is this moment. And like really everything that I'm doing is trying to create a persona for other people to see me a certain way. And they like this incredible liberating feeling of like when I die, no one will give a shit three weeks after I'm dead. Just total and complete like freedom after I did that. And I noticed after I did that, how outrageously more women were attracted to me. When I went into every interaction, like the greatest book on dating I've ever read, I, I used to say it was a, the $100 million offer. It's actually The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Like if you could have that attitude or the, the subtle art of not giving a fuck by Mark Manson, that just complete and total Fantastic. attitude of yeah. just disregarding what she thinks. Now, not to the point where you're, you're autistic or uncalibrated. If right. your breath smells bad, like the guys who go, they don't show you. Have you seen the 60 day challenge, yeah. 60 days of no showering. And then they're eating food off other girls' plates or they're lying down in the middle of the street or they're barking at women. That's just uncalibrated. Yeah. That's not giving a fuck. That's actually giving too much of a fuck to prove to yourself. You don't you give mean, a fuck. Yeah. That's actually the opposite. That's psychologically unhealthy. It's like the true freedom of recognize the true freedom comes from like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Mangle Frank, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy that come to the realization that like the, you, no one's going to care when you die. Yeah. That, that, that utter and total freedom once I came to that point. And I do that with my clients all the time. I'm like, your president fucked a porn star while his wife was pregnant, got elected. A man changed his gender to female, murdered, like killed someone out in the road, like ran him over while he was drunk and was named woman of the year four months later. Yeah. No one gives a shit. OJ Simpson right now is in Florida somewhere. People are making tick white girls are going up to him, making TikToks with him, and he stabbed two people 53 times. Ronald Goldman's blood was in his car and he got off a murder conviction. And no one gives a fuck, but you think you're gonna get in trouble because you posted a meme or went and talked to some hot girl. It's crazy when you come to the full and total realization that nobody cares what you do. And that's it. That's what I realized. No one pays for shit. You're like, you know, all this, all this, this rhetoric, these only fan girls, what's going to happen when their kids find out of it? Really? Nothing, nothing's going to happen because there's going to be so many girls with money that, that did OF that like, no one's going to give a shit. I've right. seen PTAs kick women out. And by the way, I don't even disagree with that from a moral standpoint. I don't want to marry a girl who fucks on only fans. I totally get that. I actually don't even want my kids to go to a school with a bunch of women who's, I get it. And my friends do only fans. I totally understand the sentiment, but at the same time, some girl who does only fans will be a governor. Right. She will be a mayor someday. And you're going to see the over 10 windows going to shift so far to the left that none of this is going to matter. So while I have may have my own standards, I'm also realistically understanding that the world is shifting to the left and that's just the way it is. So get used to it and make and in, like like Richard Cooper says, enjoy the demise. Well, you know, adapt or die. Right. Yeah. That's the, the fundamental law of, of nature. So, um, yeah, we're we're just about out of time here, but this has been a fantastic uh, conversation. I've really enjoyed your insights and thank you for sharing your uh, your story. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, you know, where can people sign up for MOA? Mm -hmm. let, let them know. Go to Instagram. Uh, find me at Michael Sartain. If you want to sign up for our free school server, the free school server is going to have the first four steps of MOA. It's going to have our calendar. It's going to have all our Instagram testimonials, all our video testimonials, and our and our uh, and uh, there's something else I can't remember right now. Oh, the schedule for all the free calls. It will be on the on the on the. Uh, free MOA group school group if you guys want to do that if you but if you want to just like join men of action like you really want to make a massive change in your life just go to MOA mentoring.com you can do that just or just hit me up on Instagram and I'll and I'll show you where all that stuff is all right well Beautiful. you guys heard it from here so sir thanks very much thank you man I appreciate it awesome nice